Come on, brother. Bro. Excuse me. service 
at this time, don't usually see the ones that come at 9 o'clock, uh, our seniors, but uh, uh, the Pences were here this morning, and that was great. They haven't been for uh, a few weeks, but Marietta Lambert, she had been out for a couple weeks where she broke her foot, uh, and uh, she had some therapy on that, and she was able to get back, so it was good seeing her back. And uh, you still keep praying for some of our folks. We've had some that's not been uh, back to services at all uh, since all this started. They have some uh, pretty serious underlying health conditions, uh, so they're trying to be careful with that. And uh, thankfully, we have you know tools like you know Facebook and YouTube. And if I knew of anything else other than Facebook, you, uh, I'm kind of sick of Facebook, kind of sick of the social media stuff going on in our country. Uh, sometimes the only way you can hurt these people is hurt them financially, and uh, so you know I would love to see them shut down in a hurry. Uh, but anyway, if you know of anything else you know, we can use, let me know, and I'd be happy to to go that route or at least explore it. But uh, a few announcements I want to let you know about. So I want to give enough time to uh, Brother Dylan. He uh, is to uh, Israel. They're they're going to be heading to Israel uh, as soon as possible, and I know. This uh, COVID-19 stuff has kind of messed up uh, plans a little bit, kind of delayed a little bit, but God's in control of all of that. Um, I did want to mention also if you, uh, and I don't think we have anybody who normally does this, but uh, we do ask, we are live streaming the service, and we will have it on YouTube later. So just if you would, uh, please don't mention anything. If you really, really, really you know, like something he says, please don't mention their name with Israel anywhere because it will be tracked down and uh, they will not be allowed in the country. Uh, so we just ask you to be very careful with that. And that's true with any anybody going to Israel. It's not just Israel. There's some other countries like that as well. They're just very close to anybody trying to get the gospel in. And uh, But God uh, is able to open doors and I'm glad that there's a door open for them and they are going through it uh, as the Lord leads. <clears throat> um, Something else I want to mention, uh, School of Bible Classes, they will begin next Monday evening uh, on the 14th. That will be at 6.30, and uh, so about a week from now uh, we'll have those. And if you haven't told me you're interested, let me know, and then I can make sure you have a notebook there for you. Uh, I think there's probably going to be six or seven of us. We'll be in the fellowship hall, so we'll have plenty of room uh, to spread out if that is a concern uh, of yours. Also, uh, Michaela Smith and Seth Homer are going to be getting married this Saturday. So, uh, congratulations to them. It's coming up very quickly. And we weren't sure of the time, but we got an official. It's 2 o'clock. So, uh, 2 o'clock is the time it'll be here. And uh, all the church folks are invited to that. But we do ask if you are planning on staying for the reception, if you have not told Seth uh, yet about that, um, if you can Facebook message him, text him, or just tell him, say, hey, we're planning to be here. And, uh, and that way to make sure that there's enough food uh, for everybody. So they just don't want anybody to be left out. So I know that would help them out tremendously. Uh, we also are going to have uh, the Balanges are heading up. And I think uh, Craig and Hope probably this Thursday we have a few folks, I think, going up to the mission. Now, they did cancel the... Uh, capital City Blitz there in Columbus, uh, but they're still going to take some supplies up to the mission, and uh, they're going to be able to see, I think, maybe the women's home and, and then uh, the mission itself, but we have lots of food items. So if you have anything, any toiletries, uh, and mainly it's men that need the toiletry items because there's only a few ladies that they have currently right now, but there's mostly men uh, that need those things in the home. But uh, if you have anything like that or any food that you would like to bring, uh, please just make sure that's here by Wednesday because Thursday, uh, late afternoon, evening, sometime, uh, we'll be getting uh, the truck and everything loaded for that. Uh, and then also, I wanted to mention, uh, we did start, we had a good work day yesterday. It was about a half day. For those that could come, I know it was a horrible weekend, you know, Labor Day weekend. That didn't even dawn on me uh, when I mentioned that. But uh, we're going to have some time to work uh, on the playground and there's some other projects that need done. So what I would like, if you have some time off through the week and you are able to do something or would like to come say, hey, yeah, I've got some time, can I come and uh, do something? If you want to just message me and let me know, uh, I'll make sure you know I'm here or something and 
uh, you know, we'll we'll get something done. You know, we'll be able to do something. We got the playground equipment out. You can probably see it. It's all scattered out through there. The two playground sets, and uh, it's it's a slow process going because uh, we have to make sure the ground's level. Then, you know, there's there's a lot of holes that's going to be dug. I mean, these holes. <laughs> I was looking at that. They're you know, 12 inches in diameter, two feet deep, and there's a lot of them. So uh, we're gonna try to, I think we have a couple people maybe that have an auger or something that we can put on a tractor and uh, make life a whole lot simpler. Or uh, if you have some bored kids at home that just you know, wanna get you know, hold, a whole digger, <laughs> we'll let them have at it and uh, keep them busy for quite a while. So anyway, uh, let me know if you're interested. We'll try to have the work that we can I can't be here this coming Saturday. Of course, we have the wedding, uh, but there's a few other things that's going on. But if you can be here through the week, we'll try to have another work day on uh, the 19th because uh, we need to get that in before uh, winter gets here. And we need to get the, the roof on the back of the church and the roof on the activity building that needs uh, sealed again. So uh, just to get a second coat on there. But anyway, that's all the announcements I have. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else uh, Masters Club has gotten started back, so that is Wednesday night. Uh, if you know any young people that like to come to that, uh, we started that this past Wednesday. And this coming Wednesday, uh, we're going to try to get the young people, if they can bring their vests uh, where they've earned their badges, uh, we'll have them come up and uh, we'll try to tell you a little bit as far as here's what they've done to earn these badges. And uh, we're not going to program quite like uh, the way it's set up to run, I think it runs a little bit more smoothly the way we're doing it. Um, and it just works better for us anyway doing it that way. But these kids have worked really hard. And I'm excited for them because it teaches them a lot of Bible, teaches them character, uh, teaches them about missionaries and all kinds of things like that that's good for them to learn. So, uh, and I appreciate our workers that are working with them. And, uh, you know, I'm just thankful that uh, we have that available. So anyway, that we'll probably do that a little bit this Wednesday, um, about s probably maybe after the announcement time, I think they'll come up. When they're done downstairs, they'll just come up and then we'll kind of show you a little bit of what's going on. So anyway, that'll be this Wednesday. But uh, Jody, come on up and lead us in another song, please. If you teenagers want to wear your vests Wednesday night. <laughs> 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 Beth and I do the team class on Wednesday night over also. We don't do a vest for the yeah. team. You you get a teenager a vest, they're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we do have time. We have a lot of fun. We reward them in different ways, but you don't want to give a vest to a teenager. But uh, let's turn to number 175. We're staying the same, standing on the problems. 175. Standing on
remind you also, uh, we do have the Sword of the Lord paper back there. Uh, those that come in, so if you'd like to get one of those, uh, just grab one. They, I think they're on the table over here. And uh, let's see, there was something else I was going to mention to you. I forgot what it was. Oh, well, I'll think of it here in a minute, whatever it is. It's terrible. We were talking about that before the service. How terrible it is to have a bad memory. <laughs> it just, and uh, sometimes just you get so absent minded. I was sitting here Wednesday. And usually it's not until I'm up here and we're, I'm saying something else, I start thinking, oh, I should have said that. Oh, I need to say this. And uh, I tell you, it's terrible. And uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. You've been there, too. But uh, it's good having the Dillons here, and I'm so thankful they've come. And I really enjoyed uh, their video presentation they had. Uh, it's been very informative. Uh, one thing he said, I did want to mention this. I picked this up from Sunday School. Uh, I thought it was interesting, and if you weren't in here, uh, you had missed it, but he had mentioned how the Israeli people, they use our Old Testament, same 39 books, that's what they use, that's their Bible, but uh, someone had asked the question as far as how open are the people there, and um, he had made the comment that the devil has kept them away from their book, which is the Old Testament. The devil has kept them away from it. I wonder why that is, you know, and, there, and he had made, made this comment that uh, a guy he studied Hebrew with, uh, he mentioned to him that, was, well, you just see Jesus all through the Old Testament, you see Jesus all through that, and of course, Jesus is all through it, and, uh, but that is why God tries to keep us away from the Word of God, because God's Word is powerful, it, it'll transform your life, there's nothing that'll change your life like God's Word. And uh, I, I dare you, I challenge you, uh, if you need your life changed, and you know, even if you think you're already spiritual, you get more to God. Right? I was up front here, I said, what time does the preacher usually get done? He said, 11.15. <laughs> I'm already late, brother. <laughs> Look at what he says in Mark 14, verse 3. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she break the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the bear me. Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. We pray you'll help us to lay aside what we've been busy with. Lord, every person here has been busy doing something. We've had our minds and hearts on things. But help us, as this is Sunday, to set aside the busyness of what we've been doing and listen and focus on your word. That we might have a heart like Mary to do what we can. We pray in Jesus' gifts and talents for the Lord. On the other hand, today, is that you can do what you can. Look at verse 8, what it says. Jesus says, She hath done what she could. We need to do what we can for God. First, look at the situation. Look at verse 3. Check it out. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, Jesus loved Bethany. Bethany is a little village outside the city of Jerusalem. If you go to Jerusalem and you go over the Mount of Olives, the Mount of Olives is very big today. It's covered with great stones of the Jews who are buried there. They healed by Jesus to risen up because of the power of Jesus. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out, you see. And so I think that Simon the leper is having this, this meal in honor of Jesus, not only for his own healing of leprosy, but his friend Lazarus in the same small town has been risen from the dead. And so Jesus' popularity is growing. But watch this. Here's what's going on. These men are celebrating 
what Jesus has done. But Mary is going to walk into that room and she's going to honor Jesus for what he's about to do. And that's what's going to happen here. So we see here uh, the situation, but I want you to see the sacrifice of this lady. Look at it with Mary in verse 3. Check it out. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the meeting, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spiker, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. Now I want you to know, Mary had an intuition. Now listen here. Do you know women have intuition? Do you believe in women's intuition? Who's getting married? Brother Coma and, and, and honey, what's your name? Michaela. Son, can I give you some counseling right now? From the <laughs> <brother? laughs> yeah, yeah. Women have intuition, yeah. friend. Yeah. Don't you ever lie to her because she'll read you like a book, brother. <laughs> Women have a radar about them that, that God, it's God-given, sister. Amen. It's God-given that they have it for children. When children are quiet, we, we men still keep watching them. We, we're still watching the game, man. Man, that can't be proud. But women will pay attention to things, and they see things that men don't see. And she'll see things that, and 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 ask her for advice once in a while. It'll, I I do that with my wife. It'll do you good, brother. And she'll appreciate it. She'll respect you for it. Okay. Don't ever lie to her, because she'll see right through you. Okay. So women have intuition, right? But here's the thing: Mary not only has women's intuition; she has something beyond that. She has a spiritual intuition. About what is coming. And as I read the Bible, she's the only person I can find who knows what Jesus is going to do. She knows it. Now let me ask you a question. She's going to be criticized here for what she's about to do. Let me just link two things together for you. Was she ever criticized before this marriage? Yes, yeah, she was. Yeah. When was she criticized before? Anybody know? When she was sitting at his feet. And I believe the two are linked. I believe the reason she knew what Jesus was about to do was because she was a woman who sat at Jesus' feet. Mm -hmm. You understand the link there? By the way, we all need to sit at Jesus' feet. What the preacher said earlier is true. We need to spend time in God's Word every day. And I'll tell you what, you young people, you have no reason not to read the Bible. That's right, yes. You got, I've got the Bible, look, i got the Bible, look, I can start pulling gadgets out of that bag right there. I've got my Dell laptop, I've got my S9, uh, I've got my s tag. I have two phones, I, I, I won't explain why, but i got two <laughs> phones, okay. i got an S9, i got an S10, i got the Bible on the S9, the Bible on the S10, the Bible on the laptop, I've got a Bible here. Listen, technology's great. I love I use I, I use my computer. I'll get helpful commentaries and that kind of thing. There, there are a lot of tools out there. See the preacher, he can help you on directing you in your personal study. Because that's how you grow, you right. see. Yes. And Mary here was that kind of woman. So there's a link between uh, you know what she did the first time when she was criticized and now. I want you to see her investment here. Watch what happens. It says, And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the lepers, it sat at me, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spider, very precious. This was very, very valuable. She comes and walks into this room with this alabaster box, and she's going to shock everybody. When the people see that, honey, hand me that box right there. This is the best I can do for an alabaster box. I know it says butter on it, but we'll pretend, <laughs> we'll pretend it's an alabaster box. It was likely a white box. This product that is in the box is called ointment of spikener. That is not native to Israel. Spikener is a flower that's native to the high Himalayas. That's why it costs so much. Do you understand where they had to go to get this stuff? or how far they had to transport. We're talking the upper Himalaya mountains, way up in northern India, Nepal, Pakistan. We're in the Himalaya mountains here, and they harvested this flower called spikener. And they had a way of filling up a box and preparing it, so when, and then they would seal the box with wax. And so when you broke it, you would smell this great, fragrance all through a large room. What this was done for 
was this was done only for kings and rulers. It cost so much. Now I want to tell you, when Mary came in that room and they just saw what it was, if they saw the box, they would be stunned. There would have been a gasp in the room. They would have gone, oh, no, let, let's practice that, okay? I'm going to show you the box and I want you to give, you give me a gasp when you see the box. Ready? Okay, some of you, your masks are in the way. Leave okay? <laughs> your mask on, just do better. Ready? That was worse, okay? <laughs> Ready? <laughs> All right. They would have been shocked when they saw her walk in this room. It says, let's see the scripture here. It says it was very precious. How much did it cost? Who can tell me? It's in the text. 300 pieces. 300 pence. Now check this out. A pence is a man's day's wage. That's a year's salary for a man. And you put that into modern terms, what this cost. I personally believe this was her life savings. I think she took her life savings and purchased this so she could honor Jesus in this way. Can you imagine Mary? You, they didn't sell this stuff in Bethany where she lived. She lived in a little town. This was like living in Bethany. And so you go to the big town of Roanoke, the Star City, and opens her purse and starts to pull shekels out onto the table, brother. And that man says, oh, my God, would you like this gift wrapped? Okay, I can get breakfast for you. Some of these may have been apostles who were there. I bet you they changed their tune in heaven. When Mary walks the street, I bet when Mary walks up there now, I bet they don't consider what she did as a waste. I bet she's highly honored for what she did. Look at verse 5. For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and given to the poor, and they murmured against her. Jesus obviously defends her. Look at verse 6. And Jesus said, well, let her record it. So what God wants you to do, what God wants me to do, like Mary here, what did she do? She had done what she could. You find what you can do, and that's what you do. And God is happy with you doing what you can for God. Amen? Yeah. Watch for opportunities. I told the, the church earlier, the bag stuff, the, they got seeds and all kinds. Oh, I only looked at the, at the top of the Dead Sea, and at the top of the Dead Sea is Qumran, where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. And so you can see the caves of the Dead Sea Scrolls. It's all interesting. And so then, it's at the end of the day, supper time, and we drive from the top of the Dead Sea up Route 90 through Samaria, through the West Bank, we drive from the top of the Dead Sea to the bottom of the Sea of Galilee, which, which is a little ways. So now it's about 7 o'clock, and I drive in to the place we were staying, these little cottages, and uh, it was on Saturday evening. And there's a young lady, and she's sitting on the step like this. She's sitting there, and she's got a piece of her luggage. And I get out of the car, and she says, Excuse me, are you staying here? With, she spoke English with a Hebrew accent. And I said, yeah, I am. She said, I, I believe your key is under the mat right there. And I, I, I took a couple steps toward her and I said, oh, do you work here? And she said, and she began, to, she, she was upset. She began to cry. She said, no, 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 I do not work here, but your key is under the mat. I said, oh, okay, no problem, no problem. So we went in, we moved our stuff in the cottage and I said to my wife, I said, there's something wrong with that girl, young lady. I said, something's going on with her. So I'm going to go talk to her. So I went out and I said, hey, my name is Bill. Her name was Eli. I said, uh, is everything okay? And she began to cry. And I mean, tears coming down her face. And she said, no, this is not okay. I'm sorry. I said, what's going on? She said, I came here with my boyfriend. And it's so beautiful to see the sea. And, and it is very pretty. The sea of Gatter's Mountains all the way around it. You know? And she said, we came here to stay, and she said, we had a big fight. And he cussed at me, and he cussed at me, and he cussed at me, and he drove away, and he has left me here. And he said, he's not coming back, and I'm stuck here. I do not know what to do. And I said, well, Eli, when I don't know what to do, I pray. Can, can we pray? Because that's the truth. When I don't know what to do, I pray. You know? That's all I knew what to say. I said, can I pray? She said, yes, yes. I said, I need no three. I'm a Christian. 
and sat down, okay? She said, yes, yes. I said, I will pray in the name of Jesus, okay? She said, yes, yes, that's fine. So I prayed in the name of Jesus. When I got done praying, I pulled out this tract. I said, Eli, I know you got a big problem right here, and we'll get to that. But I want to tell you about another problem. And brother, I held that up, and when I held it, she translated in the Hebrew. I said, Eli, what does that say? And in English, she said, it says God's bridge to heaven. I said, correct. That's exactly what it says. I said, you see the problem we have? See the word chata? Sin. Our sin separates us from God. And there's a place called Gehi Nome, which is hell. And because of our sin that we all, and by the way, she knew she was a sinner for what she was up there doing, amen? And I said, because of our sin, we would go to hell. And we cannot get to heaven by hadat, by our religion, our good works, or kesef, our money. But here's the good news. See that? Derech Yeshua. Jesus is the way. And I walked her through this. And at the end, I, I showed her this, that it says Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. He's the way to heaven. She didn't get saved, but she listened and she took it. I said, all right, let's, let's talk about your other problem. Can we get you a taxi? I said, where do you live? She said, Jerusalem. Now, I want you to think of a map. We're here to see Galilee. Jerusalem's like a two-hour, two-and-a-half-hour drive each way from where I'm at. I said, uh, can we get you a taxi or a bus or something? She said, no, no, no. Today is Saturday. Sabbath. Sabbath. Everything's closed. Everything shuts down on the Sabbath. So I had to think real quick. I got a young lady here crying because she can't get home because some idiot dude, right? Yeah. And have you ever done ministry when you're tired? And I said to her, I said, all right, look, if we can't, we'll see what we can do. But if we can't find a way to get you home, I'm going to go get my wife. We'll drive you to Jerusalem. Well, she looked stunned. She said, you, you would do this for me? She said, you are but a stranger. You see, I'm a Christian. She said, you are such a good man. I cannot believe you would do this. She said, you are such a good man. She said, may I ask you a question? I said, sure. She said, do you happen to have a son who is not yet married? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I said, well, yeah, I have a son, but he's already married. That girl was ready to move on, right? Amen. You should be moving on from that dude. Amen. Be glad when you're a girl and you find a good guy. Amen. Okay, look, can you say amen? Right. Here's my point. I could, I was tired, friend. I could have gone in and laid down and just left that alone. But God dropped that girl in front of me. And you know what? If I didn't pay attention to it, I'd have missed it. I prayed for you a lot many times since that she would get saved. I hope to meet her in heaven someday. But here's the thing. You never know. God may drop somebody right, but if you're too busy for somebody like that, you're just plumb too busy. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Mary did what? She did what she could. That's all God is asking from each of us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Help us, Lord, to realize we just need to do what we can. God, each person here can do something. Lord, we pray that you'll help us have open hearts. And Lord, if there's one here today and I'm saved, help them to realize that Jesus loves them. That you died on the cross, was buried and rose again. And their only answer is not their church or good works, but through you. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, you're here today and say, Preacher, God spoke to my heart. Maybe you're not saved. If you've never done that, you've never accepted the gift of salvation. I'd love to pray for you. Just raise your hand right now. Let me pray for you if that's your need. You're here today and you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. But God spoke to my heart about doing what I can. And I need to do something more. Maybe there's something else God would lay on your heart. You say, would you pray for me that, that I would do maybe a little bit more? That I would do what I can for Jesus? Here's my hand. Anyone like that? Thank you. I see your hands. Thank you. You put them down. Anyone else? Father, thank you for these hands and the, and the hearts that raised them, the people. We pray, Lord, you'll help each one, help, help them to, Lord, consider what they can do. Help us all to leave out of here as a, but realizing we're a missionary, maybe not to Israel, but to Monroe County, to this area here, Giles County. 
Lord, help us to take the gospel where we are. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? As we sing a song of invitation, I'm going to ask you to, if you've made a decision for the Lord, if you would come seal that decision here in the altar, or if you'd like to come pray for these uh, names on these cards up here, please do that as well. 388. 388, if we sing a few verses, won't you come? So let's close our service now in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Derek if you might dismiss him in prayer, please. Father God, we come before you and with thankful hearts. And, uh, we thank you first for our salvation and we thank you for what you did on the cross. And uh, God, we just ask that you'd help uh, each one of us as Christians in this room to be a witness for you. God, that we might do what we can do. We pray for the Dillons and the, uh, their mission there, getting into Israel and all the hoops and stuff that they have to go through, Father God, we just pray for them and we pray that you give them 